So if you've switched to a whole natural foods diet, you're eating more meat and healthy saturated fats, you might feel amazing. You're shedding weight effortlessly, sleeping better and reducing inflammation, but then you see that your cholesterol has gone up a little. It's kind of scary, right? But what if everything you've been told about cholesterol is completely wrong? Well, today I'm gonna break down the science and cover why elevated cholesterol might not be the villain that you actually think it is, the real dangers of lowering cholesterol without understanding the risks, and then the critical tests that you should be focusing on for genuine heart health. And before you rush to fix your cholesterol numbers, there's something that you need to know because the real risk might not be what you actually think. And keep in mind that I've only been helping people lose weight for about 15 years, so none of this is medical advice. So before we dive into why everything we know about cholesterol could be completely wrong, we need to understand its controversial history. So back in the early 1950s, Ansel Keys, a pathologist from the University of Minnesota, had hypothesized that saturated fat was the key factor in the rise of heart disease. Now, Keyes' groundbreaking study, the Seven Countries Study, showed clear observational evidence Evidence that in the United States, Japan, Finland, Italy, Greece, Netherlands, and Yugoslavia, there was a strong correlation that diets high in saturated fat were linked to heart disease. But this is where it actually gets really interesting. So Keyes originally looked at 22 different countries, but determined that the other 15 countries didn't meet his strict criteria. And coincidentally, countries like France, Germany, and Switzerland were excluded from the study despite their low levels of heart disease and relatively high consumption of saturated fat. That's weird. In fact, the French paradox is still widely discussed today because heart disease and obesity are fairly low, yet they still eat a significant amount of butter. Now, this study was monumental in paving the way for our current cholesterol guidelines and recommendations, but should it have been? I mean, was the seven countries study even a high quality or robust study to begin with? Well, the simple answer is no. But why? First, it focused almost exclusively on dietary saturated fat as the key factor, overlooking other significant contributors to heart disease, such as processed sugar consumption, hardened vegetable oil consumption, smoking, exercise, and socioeconomic conditions. The study was also observational, which makes it only useful for developing hypotheses, not conclusions. And lastly, the omission of 15 other countries and potentially hundreds more could have made this more complete. So if the foundation of our understanding of saturated fat and cholesterol was built on shaky cherry pick science, it raises an even bigger question. What about the guidelines we've been following for decades? And is lower cholesterol really even better? Well, turns out that a growing body of research says it actually might not be, and the evidence might completely change how you think about cholesterol and your health. Now, according to the CDC, their current guidelines suggest that our total cholesterol should be 150 milligrams per deciliter. But it wasn't always this low. Back in the 1960s, anything below 300 milligrams per deciliter was considered normal. Then in the 1970s, they dropped it down to 240 milligrams per deciliter. And then in the 80s, it was lowered to less than 200 grams per deciliter. And it seems to get lower and lower, but is there any evidence that this is actually improving outcomes or overall mortality or risk of death? Well, it's actually highly doubtful and easily debatable. Here's why. So I've written about this study in my newsletter. There's a link in the description you want to check it out because it's unbelievably eye-opening. But this scientific paper is called Total Cholesterol in All-Cause Mortality by Sex and Age, a prospective cohort study among 12.8 million adults. And here's a quick breakdown of it. So this study examined the relationship between total cholesterol levels and all-cause mortality in 12.8 million Korean adults. And they discovered something remarkable and highly controversial. They found that the optimal total cholesterol range for lowest risk of death in general was between 210 and 249 milligrams per deciliter, with younger adults between 18 and 34 requiring slightly lower levels for best outcomes. They also found a U-shaped association where both low and high levels of cholesterol were linked to increased mortality. And this is where it gets wild. So low cholesterol was actually associated with a greater increase in mortality risk compared to high cholesterol levels, suggesting that low cholesterol may be more detrimental in this population. 
population. For example, with the people in this study, if you had a total cholesterol of 140, which would be incredible under the CDC's recommendations, according to this study, you would have about a 55% increased risk of dying. And this risk of death is substantially higher than if you had a total cholesterol of 300, which would increase your overall risk of death by about 30%. Now to add more fuel to the fire, here's a different study that collected data from electronic medical records from a large healthcare system to see how LDL cholesterol levels relate to overall mortality. And this was done in non-diabetics who were not on statins. Similarly to the Korean study, they found that both very low and very high LDL levels were linked to higher mortality, while LDL levels between 100 and 189 milligrams per deciliter had the lowest risk of death. And this clearly challenges the idea that lower LDL is always better, especially for people without prior heart problems. So if lower cholesterol isn't the guaranteed path to better health, it might be important to understand why, because it's actually incredibly complex and important to our overall health. Now, to better understand why high levels of cholesterol might be good, and when I say high, I mean just in line with the Korean study, we need to appreciate what cholesterol is involved in and how your body uses it. So here are four important biological functions of cholesterol that appear to be kind of important. First, it's a crucial part of cell membrane structure. So without cholesterol, the cell membrane would become too weak and leaky, allowing harmful substances to get in and then important molecules to escape. And this could potentially damage the cell, making it unable to work properly. And if enough cells are affected by this, tissue and organs could basically just stop functioning, leading to really, really serious health problems. Cholesterol is also a precursor for steroid hormones, which include cortisol, aldosterone, and sex hormones. And low levels of cholesterol could reduce the production of these essential hormones, which could then further lead to hormone imbalances. And this might result in issues like low energy, poor stress responses, irregular menstrual cycles, reduced fertility and weakened immune system function, as well as impairing of vital processes like metabolism and electrolyte regulation. And cholesterol is also critical for bile acid production and it's actually converted into bile acids in the liver, and these are essential for digesting and absorbing dietary fats and fat soluble vitamins, so vitamins A, D, E, and K in the intestines, which are really important for normal hormone function. And then it's pretty important for your brain and your nervous system too. So 20 to 25% of your brain is actually made of cholesterol, and cholesterol is a key component in the myelin sheath that surrounds and insulates nerve cells, which is gonna be important for efficient transmission of nerve signals. It's actually so important that your brain actually produces cholesterol on its own. So it appears to me that cholesterol, though demonized, is actually critical to human health. And obviously there seems to be a sweet spot, but the CDC, the American Heart Association, and doctors across the nation are telling us that lower is better. But what happens if we try to keep our cholesterol numbers too low? Now, before we discuss some of the downsides of low cholesterol, it's important to understand that lower cholesterol levels are linked to improved outcomes in people who are extremely high risk for cardiovascular vascular events, often in people who have already had heart attacks. But as previously mentioned, low cholesterol often has worse outcomes compared to high cholesterol in healthy populations. And to illustrate the point even further, here's what low levels of cholesterol are linked to. And keep in mind that these are not causal. So there's a 15X increased risk of hematological cancers like leukemia. There's a 5X risk of fever and sepsis. And I'm not sure if you know this, but sepsis is the leading cause of death in hospitals, approximately 35% of all deaths. It's also linked to impaired cognitive performance, so brain function. It's linked to increased risk of diabetes. And then it's also just linked to higher risks of cancer in general. But the findings in this paper were derived from 23 different studies on statin-induced low cholesterol. So maybe it's the statins, but it does appear to me that at best, cholesterol and LDL are extremely confusing because mainstream science says that they're linked to heart disease and increased mortality, but legitimate studies that I just happen to find by doing a few minutes of internet sleuthing say the exact opposite. So what's the best way to figure out if you're healthy? Are there any tests that can be taken? But first, let's imagine that you're following the standard American diet. You're eating about nine and a half gallons of seed oils per year and about 60 pounds of added sugar. You do all of this for years, and then you check out my metabolic nutrition blueprint, adopt all nutrition action steps, eat whole natural sources of food, increase saturated fat consumption, and you start to lose weight. In fact, it's pretty effortless and you also notice that you feel better from not eating processed garbage, but there's a problem. Your cholesterol goes up. So the big question here is, 
Would you classify yourself as healthy or unhealthy? Well, to me, it's kind of a no-brainer, but if you're still worried about cholesterol, it's important to understand two things. First, losing weight along with feeling energized and healthy are actually pretty great predictors of health. And then there are also a number of other biomarkers that 100% need to be considered. And if my doctor actually told me to get on a statin after only looking at my LDL and total cholesterol, I'd probably fire him instantly. So if you wanna know exactly what biomarkers I'm personally looking at when I get my labs done, here they are. So we have a fractionated lipid panel, oxidized LDL tests, triglycerides, fasting insulin, hemoglobin A1C, homocysteine, LP little a, ApoB, high sensitivity C-reactive protein, so HSCRP. And then I'll also consider getting a coronary artery calcium test when I turn 40 in about another year and a half or so. Now, I would definitely do all of these if I was seriously concerned about my cardiovascular health because statins are no joke and often come with consequences that appear to be pretty bad. So where do we go from here? Well, to be honest, what I've just presented in this video is just an argument, and it's not enough information to make an educated decision on how to approach your cholesterol levels. It just kind of scratches the surface. Also, I'm generally pretty skeptical of the motives behind multi-billion dollar companies that have significant influence in our healthcare system. But personally, I think I'll just stick to eating high saturated fat foods like beef, organ meats, butter, eggs, and cheese and call it a day. And if you think that's a weird way to eat, watch this video right here where I go over four of the most overrated foods for fat loss.